So welcome everyone to our Wednesday night yin. And yeah, as people are checking in, be sure to grab your props. If we have a strap, grab a strap. And if we don't, just grab a towel. I couldn't find my strap tonight. So I just grabbed a towel, even like a little kitchen towel is great. And yeah, water, tea, anything that we might need. I'm gonna also recommend like a pillow or a um, blanket, something for knee protection, because we are gonna look at a little bit of that lunge work. And one of the things that we're gonna talk about tonight is we're gonna be talking about the ankle. And one of the things that we discuss a lot within the yin practice is skeletal variation. As we begin tonight, one of the things that I wanna tell you is that within the history of yin, remember that this is the stretching from the Kung Fu lineage. But part of what drastically changed is that Paul Greeley actually had studied anatomy at UCLA and he was already doing Ashtanga and Bikram actually before he even found Yin. And so he knew a lot about the body and it helps us to understand now with the work that they've done looking at bones, it helps us to understand how each of our bodies are different. If we were to like, for example, look at femur bones, which are like the large muscles in the thigh area. If we were to line up like a bunch of femur bones from different people, we would see that they're all shaped really differently. And things like that can matter a lot when we're doing a forward fold or um, you know, a wide leg fold or something. We're gonna get to know so much more about the body. And today, like I said, we're gonna look a lot at the ankle and how that can affect things like a squat and even the lunge. Okay, so let's grab our props and we'll come to our seated space. We're always checking in and we're noticing how we feel. I'm teaching you here in Portland, Oregon, where we actually have really warm temperatures. And we're gonna note how things like temperature can really change how the body feels. So let's note if the practice feels different than a week ago, a month ago. For some of you, it's a year ago, five years ago. So we're noticing those details about how maybe something like a squat or child's pose feels really different today. Okay, now seated, let's lengthen the spine. We're gonna come all the way up and out the crown of the head, maybe even lift the chin, maybe even close the eyes. Notice how we feel, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We check in with everything. Noticing things like how has that digestive gut realm been? How do your joints feel? And of course, how have you been sleeping? Let's bring the hands to the heart and let's set our intentions. Let's dedicate our practice. And very gentle. We're going to release the hands super, super slow. Good. We're going to start tonight looking at a gentle head neck stretch. And you might want to stay seated on the pillow. You could also move your pillow away. What we're looking at are the movements within the neck area, things like scalenes, SCM, noticing how, especially when we're looking at these movements, we might find that one side is really different than the other. So you're gonna start with the spine lengthened. And then all I want you to do is just gently drop this right ear over toward that right shoulder. Yeah, I'm gonna give us a minute, just go super slow. And there is that option also to even use that hand if you wanna go a little bit deeper. But listen to the body, it could be really gentle. Just breathing. And I want you to notice details, even things like what are we feeling in the connection point more like in the neck area? And then also noticing through and out, like even toward the shoulder.
Okay, exhale. Now, super slow release. You might even let the head float through center and using that other hand to help, yeah. This side could be quite different. So we take it really gentle, left ear toward the left shoulder. And remember, if you want, you could use that arm. Go super slow. One minute. Try to soften the muscles in the face. You might feel like clicking, popping, movement. Keep breathing. Good. Now exhale, same thing, maybe even use the hand to help the head back through center. Yeah, very, very gentle, good. We hold tension in different areas and even just like sleeping, you know, maybe differently or something one night could affect what we feel. So we're noticing all these details. Now move the props away. We're gonna look at child's pose and I'm gonna give you a long hold here. I'm gonna give you five minutes. And one of the things we're gonna think about tonight, we're not just thinking about the back, we're not just thinking about the arms, but because we're talking about the ankle, also note that this could be an intense stretch for the feet and the ankle. It could be that this pose isn't available because of the mobility within the ankle. Knees could be together or apart, hands can go forward, or back. So whatever you want to do, and again, I'm going to give you five minutes here. So yeah, whichever piece you're working on, that's the way. And just find that very, very first stretch. Keep breathing, keep letting go. Just keep breathing here and remember that part of what we're noticing tonight is what's happening in the ankle. We may be feeling a stretch in the back and the arms, but we're also noticing the top of the feet. Maybe even stretch into the shin. Just keep breathing.
Keep your face soft and keep releasing more. Notice details. Keep breathing. Okay, now, very, very slow. <clears throat> I want you to release and be sure to take anything at all <clears throat> that we want in between. And yeah, you might feel like clicking, popping, movement, noticing all those details. <clears throat> so take whatever you want, and then we're going to be looking more at that ankle kind of mobility. And one of the things that we know now, because we're understanding about how the fluids in the joints help things um, to keep moving in a way that doesn't stress the joint. And as we get older, we actually don't have as much of that hyaluronic acid and it's harder to make. So that's a big deal with yin because we're essentially using our own body to lubricate the joints. That's really cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do with the next one we're going to do our hamstring work, <clears throat> but this even in its own has components where we're kind of becoming more aware of the ankle. So I want you to be seated right leg forward, test it because for some of you, it's the left foot coming into midline. And in both of these folds, they're forward going over the right leg, but sometimes it's better to bend this left knee and do it more like that kind of like a runner, like lunge style or that hurdle style. Yeah, so it might be better to do this one. And again, part of what we're thinking about is how there is this component of what's happening within the mobility of the ankle in both of these pieces. Okay, so whichever one you pick, and you could also have an option of even like using your strap here if you want, you could totally be using a strap as well. <laughs> yeah, let's do, let's do three on each side, that should be good. Yeah, just find that very, very first stretch. Okay. Let's go slow. Of course, in our body, everything is connected, but sometimes when we start doing yoga and especially yin, we're seeing it at these different levels. We become more aware of what's happening, not just in the bones and in the muscles, but also within the fascia and the connective tissue. And so when we, for example, you know, provide mobility like in the neck area that could very well affect the sacrum or the ankle because things can domino through the system. So when we create space in one area, 
we're often creating space in another area as well. Just observing, keep breathing. You're very good now. I want you to release that first side. Yeah, go super slow. As always, do whatever we want in between. A little bit shorter hold on this one tonight. A lot of what I have you thinking about here, we're not just warming up the hammies, but we're also noticing that you know left and right can be different, but we're really getting to know more in detail about certain areas. And just by bringing a little bit more awareness to something like the ankle, we might notice something new. Okay, second side. And we'll do that same amount of time. So now we've got left leg forward and we can have that right foot to midline or you can bend that right knee and do more of that like hurdle side. Okay, three minutes on that second side. Very, very gentle. You might feel it all in the back or maybe it's mostly in the back of the leg. Maybe it's different left side compared to the right side. Keep breathing, keep the face soft. Breathing, we remember that because the tighter, shorter tissues are always what we feel first. Sometimes it really is like peeling an onion because we have to maybe work one area and open one area before another is even able to open. 
maybe the glute or the low back is so tight that until those open, we don't get mobility in the shoulder or the knee or something. Just notice details, keep breathing. Okay, awesome. Now I want you to release, yeah. Take it super, super slow and feel. Whatever you want in between, notice clicking, popping movement. Now, as we're in between the shapes, because whenever we practice, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about or learning about, reading about. What I've been thinking about a lot this week is how in my earlier life, I actually played soccer for like a decade and I also was a ballerina and I just destroyed my ankles. But the body's so resilient that it will create adhesions and scar tissue. And I'll bet a lot of you, right, my runners, right, my dancers, a lot of you, even maybe just from life, right, we have found that with injury, there's also that ability for the body to repair. But one thing that we're finding is that the way the body repairs is with those tissues, which don't get a lot of blood flow. And then what we need to do is go back later and with stretching, be able to remove adhesions and scar tissue so that then we get proper blood flow and things can heal. Um, one of the things that we'll see a lot of times is that we either go back to our exercise too quickly or we don't go back at all and then things get overly tight. So when we're working, yin, remember that you might actually be removing scar tissue that's like really, really old. Just go slow. There's no rush, right? We're gonna get to it because we're gonna be gently getting there as we move through those dense tissues. But just remember that sometimes it takes a little while, especially for the stuff that might be a little bit older. Okay, let's do this. Let's look at, um, I want us to look at our squat now. And this is gonna be a test for the ankle. This is part of what we're looking at today. In the squat, part of what is happening has to do with the design of our ankle. So if you've got your foot on the ground, so if I've got my heel on the ground and my front foot on the ground, once my knee starts to go forward, at some point, this heel is going to come off the ground. Now, for some of you, that point could be as soon as this knee starts going forward. For some bodies, this knee can go almost to the ground before that heel will start to lift. This matters a lot when we come to a squat, when we're trying to think about have the back straight or have the heels on the ground. So remember with yin, we're not worried about what it looks like. It's more about what it feels like. I actually have two different variations. I like to do it where my heels aren't on the ground. And then sometimes I do it with the heels on the ground. You might have the arms forward or like here. We're just gonna do two minutes but we're gonna be really observing a lot about what's happening in the ankles. Yeah, so don't feel like the feet have to go on the ground. Also, you know, if we want to, you could put like a, a pillow underneath or, you know, something. So listen to the body. If that feels like a better way to do it, maybe we do that. Part of what we're doing is, you know, ankle work, but a lot of it too has to do with digestive. Okay, two minutes, squat. Remember that this is a really powerful pose. There's so many purposes to this, not just the way that we're you know, cleansing and supporting the ankle, but yeah, lots of compression, especially in the small intestine, large intestine. Breathe. And maybe like notice if you drop your chin, just go slow. Notice what you feel. The slightest shift can change everything.
keep breathing. Notice where we feel the most sensation. Okay, really good. Release, yeah, come out of that however we can. Do whatever is easiest for the body. And yeah, we might feel like clicking, popping movement. We might wanna like, you know, roll the ankles a couple of times. You can even like flex and point the feet. So just bringing more blood flow and energy in. Okay, now. I'm going to give a couple choices. Um, what I want us to be thinking about, and so for your adductor work today, you might want to do. I mean, of course, if you love if you love dragonfly, you can totally do your dragonfly. We might want to do more like a bound ankle. This could be something that could be a little bit more energetic. Thinking about the ankle. The other one, though, I know we haven't done in a while, and I want to offer is frog. But be really, really careful. Um, especially with that inner knee, the meniscus, we have to make sure to protect it. So you might be putting like a pillow underneath like each knee for this one. And frog would be the one where we're changing the way that we're using the gravity. And so if we have the knees wide here, I might have my arms forward. You go a little bit further forward or back. This is one also where, you know, depending on the body, some of you will be like pancake to the ground. We might be pretty far off. That's just bone. So don't worry about that. Yep, if you wanna do that one, you could do that one. I'm gonna give us four minutes. Yeah, whichever piece we pick, find that adductor work. I'm gonna do that diamond variation. So much of balance in the body comes from your toes. And we often don't know that until we sprain a toe or break a toe. And then we realize that there is this incredible weight distribution and awareness that's constantly happening in our body that allows us to navigate and to walk and to move. We often use our feet so much more than we realize. When I was in yoga school in Bali, there is a whole section about reflexology, which is just looking at the realm of like acupressure within the feet. And in this realm, the feet become a map of the body, which is really interesting because now as we understand more about connective tissue and how things connect in the body, it actually makes a lot of sense that we could, you know, put pressure in one area here and that it actually would stimulate the liver somewhere else. And so there's all these ways to specifically work, massage, right, target, even in the feet, that has its whole like own realm of health. Just breathing here. And the feet might feel pretty good most of the time. Maybe we have some issues. Part of why I'm bringing it up is because as our seasons change, what we're doing as far as what shoes we're wearing or being barefoot, that often changes. And so we become more connected and aware of the feet.
Okay, good. Now release, take it super, super slow and feel if we're in frog, come out whatever way is easiest. And we're just observing all that fresh blood flow. Now, because I mentioned the reflexology, I'm just gonna show you this really quick. And so in the reflexology realm, which is really fascinating. And if you ever wanna learn more, you can even just like, you know, type it in, you can see pictures, but the feet would become the map of the body. So if you were facing me and took your legs forward, what would happen is like your right shoulder would show up like over here on that right foot. And like your heart, because it's more on the left, would be like more on the left side than the right. Um, the ascending colon, because it runs up the right side, would be like here. Transverse goes across, right, descending down. So it's really interesting. The feet become the map of the body. Now, again, we're looking at all these ways to work in the system, different ways to bring energy in. In the next piece, I want us to approach this very slow because this does have a counter, meaning that if we've got history of what's called plantar fasciitis or like really severe inflammation and issues with like tendonitis within that arch of the foot, we might not want to do this piece. But I'm going to give us a minute here in what's called broken toe posture. So if I'm on the shins, we might be checking this one out. I'll even sometimes kind of fan my toes out. I have one that like doesn't want to do it. You might have one of those toes too. So we fan our little toes out, go slow. We can have the hands here. They might be onto the legs. We might be lifting a little bit up and breathe. Feel what flows through the body, blood flow. We're noticing lymphatic cleansing. We're even noticing the flow of chi. Very good, now release, yeah, take it super slow. We might wanna shake the feet out, yeah. Just take a moment there, okay. We're looking at all these different pieces. And again, you know, we might come to some areas, like some days we do a whole bunch of work for like the shoulder and the arm, and maybe we come to that section and you don't feel anything. Maybe that's the hardest section that we do. When we come to the ankle work or the foot work, maybe you don't feel much at all, but maybe we're like, wow, there's a ton that's being held in this area. So part of why we do this is we're getting to know more about the body. Where do we hold tension? Where do we maybe have stress showing up within the system? Okay, for the next one, we're gonna look at the lunge and here's something that we're gonna think about. So I got to see my teacher, my yin teacher, Matthew Shulman this week, which was very exciting. And we were um, actually uh, doing a photo shoot for Yin stuff. And when we were doing the lunge, I was noticing how, like when Shulman does his lunge, his knee is like way over here. And a lot of us, when we were taught like Hatha Vinyasa style, we were always taught like the knee can't go past the ankle because like something crazy will happen in the body. It's not true. It's just that for some body that doesn't work. And for some, it does. So even in the lunge, remember, this knee can go really far forward. That's fine. It's totally fine for the individual body if that works. It could be that we're up here. You might walk the foot out. I've been looking at that piece again, where instead of the leg being more forward, we kind of walk it out and drop the hands down. You could even go to the forearms. Also, you know, you're my advanced students, a lot of you. So remember, you could even do like, I was doing like that, reaching that right arm back and spending some time getting deeper in the quad. Yep. So whatever you're working on, I want you to listen to the body. I'm gonna give us, let's, let's do four on each side. So let's do four on each side for the lunge and let's start with that right leg forward. Yeah, whatever we're working on. And again, we're thinking more and more, not just about the hamstring, not just about what's happening you know, in the hip, but again, we're really thinking more about what's happening in that ankle. Good, breathing there.
you know, even in the lunge, there are components here which do have a lot to do with the skeletal variation in the ankle. So I have my back left foot down and that requires the ability to stretch the top of the foot. Some of you might naturally be pushing more through the toes. Maybe that's more comfortable. So again, we're just noticing those details, breathing and observing. Keep breathing, keep the face soft. Some of you might go a tiny bit deeper, listen to the body, let it be your own. Keep breathing, notice details. Okay, now release that first side for the lunge. Just go super, super slow. Feel that rebound. Yeah, really gentle. <clears throat> and take whatever you want in between. I like to bring you different you know, pieces about neurobiology, but I like to bring you a lot of different aspects. And I'm gonna give you something that I consider to be more in like the woo-woo realm now. But for example, in astrology, there is a part of the body that correlates for each sign. Your ankles um, and like the kind of like calf area. So you've got like the Aquarius region, but then Pisces is actually about the feet. So there's also this interesting connection between sleep and dreams and the feet because they're connected with Pisces, which is the 12th house and the dream realm house. Okay, let's go to our second side now. So our left leg is going to go forward. And make sure that we're really, really protecting that knee. Yeah. Let's do the same. Four minutes. Just find that very, very first stretch. <clears throat> We're noticing if the sides are different. Remember that order can matter a lot. 
I think it was the class that we did a week ago or two weeks ago. I think it was the one last week. I had a lot of you really like that order. And that's really cool because the order can matter a lot. So for example, if your ankle is super tight, that might be the area that you open first. Because if the ankle's really tight, it could prevent us from being able to do the lunge in the way that maybe we can after stretching the ankle. So we're noticing details. Does this lunge feel any different now that we have intentionally created space in the ankle foot region? Just keep breathing. Keep breathing and go very, very slow. Remember that if we're right-handed, maybe this one's a little bit tighter. Maybe it's different. Okay, now very, very gentle release. Yeah, take it slow. And of course, anything at all that we want in between. And yeah, the order can matter a lot. And that's why part of what I want all of you as my advanced students to start to think about is if we were building our own practice, if we put our hardest pose first, not only what would that be, but now we are starting to realize that what we might say today could be different than what we might say in a week or in a month. And so maybe what we're needing can even shift. A lot of times what we're finding now is that if the low back is really tight, it might be valuable to work a lot more of the low back like in the beginning. So we're getting to know all these different details. Maybe some areas have opened faster than others. So maybe your hips are a lot more mobile than they used to be. Maybe it's the glutes or something. So again, we're just starting to notice all these different details. Okay, I want us to do something for the arms. I've been really loving the inner arm stretch. And so I'm gonna offer that we do that one. Also, if it feels like too much compression to do this one on the ground, you could do a simple piece where you really would just be doing the same stretch, but we'd be using the wall. So if I were to take my arm back, I would just be using the wall to kind of gently stretch the inner arm. So you could of course just do this. I'm gonna demo this one on the belly. So I'm gonna be on the belly. I've got my right arm out. It's gonna be right palm down. 
I'm gonna be pushing into this left hand so I can roll into the right shoulder. I'm gonna demo this direction. So if I'm on my belly and I've got my right arm out, palm down, I'm gonna push into this left hand and I'm gonna get into that right shoulder. I can drop the head down. I can keep it off or put a pillow under. This arm can go anywhere. You might wanna even reach it up and back. Yeah, just go slow. I'm gonna give us a minute on that inner arm piece. Good, that's the way. Just find that very first stretch and breathing. Okay, now exhale and release that first side. Take it slow. We go through center. Yeah, and feel, remember that this one tends to go to inner arm and like into the bicep. Okay, let's go to the other side. And we'll do the same amount of time. So let's do one minute. If you're following me, you're going to be going on to the belly with that left arm out, palm down. Yep. You might be reaching that right arm up and over. Let it be your own. Keep your face soft. Exhale, release, go slow back through center. Yep. Anything that you want in between. And we're going to close tonight with our deer variation. And of course, if you have a different twist that you love and you're working on, you can do that instead. But part of why I've really been liking this deer variation is it doesn't just do incredible work into the spine, but it's getting us a lot more aware of, again, our mobility and our bending mobility in knee and in ankle. And so part of it is that even if we were to stretch, you know, get into the muscles as much as we can and open, there still could be components of the bones restricting things. So if you're facing me, this is how we're gonna get in a deer. And if you've got a bolster or a pillow, you might use that for this one. If you're facing me and you're seated, the left foot's gonna come into midline and we're gonna bend the right knee and the right foot's gonna go back. So again, you're facing me, we've got this left knee bent and the left foot is coming in toward midline and we've got the right knee bent and the right foot's going back. Now go slow because this could be a process. This could be a lot. This be, could be stretching a lot in our knee and our ankle. We might turn toward the left leg this right arm could eventually come toward the earth. Some of you are gonna have like a pillow or bolsters. And if you're on your bolster, remember that even the way you turn your head, that can really change this piece. And yeah, we can do it with or without props. I'm gonna demo with no props today. Let's do, do four on each side.
Notice as you scan the body with your awareness, details about what we're feeling. And as we're breathing here, I want us to remember that in the teachings of Yin and from this Taoist tradition, sometimes the teachings can be a little bit, um, they can feel sort of intense. And so for example, we are taught that no matter what we feel, whether it's good or bad, that that it's going to change, that it will change, and that whatever we are experiencing, it's going to pass. And that's a wonderful thing to remember when we're dealing with stress. But I remember once practicing yoga, I remember being in a yin class, and I remember the teacher saying, notice how you feel. And I, and I remember thinking on that particular day, I felt really great, and I thought, I felt great. And she said, whatever you're feeling, it's going to pass. And I felt sort of deflated. But then I realized that that's the beauty of it is that the practices remind us that things are always changing. And that whether it is what we frame as good or bad, we have this ability to have something beyond that, which is the observer to see that whatever we are feeling or experiencing it will pass and we will feel other things and those things will also pass. And there can be a sweetness in that because then we are not stuck on whatever feeling it is. Just keep breathing, keep letting go. Okay, then now release and feel. The practices of yoga, whether it is Ashtanga or Yin or Hatha, a lot of what they do is provide a container so that we see in this forward fold or in this backward bend or in this twist today, do I feel different than I did before? Am I physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually in any way different than last time I did this pose? And this is how we start to see how we're changing, how things are shifting. Now we come to seated, this time it's the right foot coming into midline and we're gonna be bending that left knee and the left foot goes back. This one could be different. Sometimes what we're feeling, you know, in one ankle or something could be different. And remember that sometimes we're healing injuries. We might be working with, you know, surgery or something. So just be very, very gentle with the body, take it slow. So we've got the right knee bent, right foot to midline. This time you're turning toward that right leg. And let's do that same four minutes. Very good.
breathing here. As we're breathing here in this final shape, I would tell you all that I want us all to live like profoundly wonderful and joyful lives. But I also know that life can be hard and that things happen. And part of why we practice is so that we are able to navigate all of the aspects of our life. And then we are able to see more about all that is good. And we are able to thrive and survive even when things are challenging. There are so many tools that we gain in this practice. We're learning how to physically care for our body. We're getting to know the body, but we're probably really getting to know ourselves. And I really believe that one of the gifts that yin gives us, and this is gonna sound really cheesy, but this shit's real. Yin allows us to love ourselves not in an egotistical way, but in this way where we really enjoy ourselves. You have to spend a lot of time with the gaze turned inward here. And if we don't love ourselves, then we become aware of that quickly with yin. And so often one of the relationships that we work on the most is of course with the self. This practice is asking us to be better on and off the mat but here, a lot of what we're often doing is we're seeing a lot about that internal. Just keep going, keep breathing, keep falling in love with yourself. Very, very good, let's release. Yeah, take it slow, feel anything at all that we want in between. Maybe like happy baby. Notice that we've got clicking, popping movement. And especially in the next couple of days, noticing mobility in the ankles. Yeah. When you're ready, come to Shavasana. Get comfortable, get warm, and be proud of yourselves. That's a pretty challenging series, and a lot of that is stuff that we haven't worked on in a while. Good, that's it. Come to Shavasana. In Shavasana, let the tongue fall away from the teeth. Let the body become very heavy. I want you to notice at first what parts of your body are connecting with the earth. So do we feel like the shoulder blades touching the earth, the head, the hips? Maybe we can observe details 
if we are pushing into one shoulder blade more than the other. And as we observe the breath, notice the rib cage area, that thoracic area. And again, we're observing if the left and right body are pressing equally into the earth. Notice the chi that flows, especially in the low leg area around the ankle. Keep the face soft, soften the fingers. And then turn floor, we begin to ground back into ourselves. Let's slowly move the fingers, very, very slowly move the toes. We can move the head and the neck, it's really micro movement at first. When you're ready, you can roll to one side, just very, very slow. And we're gonna press ourselves back up when you're ready. Let it be your own. You might wanna keep the eyes closed. We'll come to our seated space. And as we do so, I want you to bring the hands to the heart. Let us remember that all the things that we do, all the things that we say, all the energetic arrows that we shoot, they matter and have big impact. We remember our intentions. We remember all the reasons that we practice yoga. 
It is such an honor and privilege to practice together, to teach and to practice and to be together with our community. It is a privilege and an honor. And so tonight I close with these words. I say to you, the divine in me sees the divine in you. Thank you all so much. Good night. And be sure to drink lots and lots of water, sleep well, and let me know if you need anything at all. Remember, I can also send the recording for any of you that need the recording. And just in closing, um, thank you all so much. You'll know it's something I'm going to be looking more at. There's a lot of conversation in our community about even how we use the word namaste. And so I'm going to probably take that out. And I'm going to tell you honestly, you know, I spent a lot of time, um, I spent like four months traveling through India when I was younger. In my experience in India, the way that namaste was used was, was a, it was like aloha. It was like namaste, it was hello and goodbye. It was, it was a greeting, but we're finding that it's, it's something that we're looking more at how we use that language. And so you're just gonna notice that I'm probably gonna be changing a little bit about how I use the language and even some of the Sanskrit we used to traditionally use. Yeah, be sure to let me know if we have any questions at all. Thank you all so much. And yeah, notice how ankles feel in the next week. Thank you, thank you friends. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much, everyone. Wonderful to see you. Thank you, Megan. Awesome, thank you friends. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Ken. Oh, thank you, loves. Wonderful to see everyone. Thanks, Melody. Have a great night, friends.